This class is about stitching. Uh, we are going to use as an example uh, the images we shot in this uh, example uh, we see in this picture where basically we add the pigment checker at about one meter from the Ingas camera and then we have the Ingas camera mounted on Valeria Pano head. So in this uh, experiment uh, we took 28 images um, and the images as we see here, this is the, the Valeria software, uh, we add seven rows and four columns. Okay, and then for this, ex uh, for this um, experiment, uh, we use uh, our Helio halogen lamps, um, just a normal setup on, on the side, on the left, on the right. Um, the camera was a Xenix Bobcat 320 pixels, so the smaller one, and also the most affordable. And uh, on the lens, on this uh, camera, um, there was mounted a Nikon 50mm lens, so basically a standard camera, affordable, very cheap. Uh, to mount this, uh, this uh, lens, uh, you need an adapter from C to Nikon, uh, kind of an adapter. Okay, so basically we saw this slide. Uh, this is how we took the image. We have actually here a little bit of a video so we remember how the experiment was done. Okay, there it is. So we have a little bit of a review of the experimental setup. So the camera is shooting automatically. Uh, the images uh, were saved. So this uh, automatic process uh, is uh, pretty fast, that's the advantage, it takes just a few minutes to acquire the images and scan all the paintings, or in this case our pigment checker. So this is it, and, uh, and here somewhere where you decided there is a folder containing all the images. So the idea is that the images uh, uh, could be uh, explored uh, as they are, uh, but it would be better to have a final, unique final image. So a mosaic, or we call it a stitching process. Okay, so uh, basically the software PDGUI uh, will ask uh, uh, for a few parameters that we have to input. So the first parameter is uh, uh, the diagonal or active area or of our camera. So in this case I has used I used the Bobcat 320 and uh, in the spec sheets sheet there are all the information. So in this case we see that diagonal is 8.2 and the size, uh, the dimensional uh, of the sensor is 6.4, 5.12. So this is it, so we have this information just looking at the uh, technical sheets, uh, sheet of the, um, the camera. Then the software wants to know the camera lens focal length. At this point we have all we need to start the stitching. So we launch uh, PTGUI. There we are. Okay, so you see, PTGUI already um, presents itself as a three step. First step is a load the images, then is a set up the panorama, the parameter, and then step three is to actually create this panorama. Okay, in this case, so let's start with the first step. Step is load images. Uh, on the desktop over here, I have a folder. This folder contains the images. As you can see already, we have here, I can select all of them, 28 images. And they are made as uh, four columns of seven rows. So you see this is the upper corner of the pigment checker, this is the, the lower corner of the first column, and so on. So we, are, we have the first, the top, the bottom, the top, the bottom, 
the top and the last uh, right corner, uh, bottom right corner of the stitching. Uh, okay, so we go back here in a pigment check in a PT GUI and we go here into load images. The images are on the desktop. Uh, they are into pigment checker and we select all the images. So I do control A to load them. I do open. Here, as we said before, it, it's where the software is asking the few parameter. So crop factor or um, or, or on the other way, sensor diagonal or sensor size. So we have all this information. So we know, for example, we go back here to the presentation, the sensor diagonal is 8.2. We can read from here. So I can input here 8.2 sensor diagonal or um, the other parameter. Uh, but it's good just to keep in mind sensor diagonal so we just can use this uh, value i click ok uh, and then the software is asking for the focal length of the uh, lens i used in this case remember was a 50 millimeter nigon lens so i put 50 and i do ok and there it is uh, before proceeding to the second step, uh, we can use what here on the projects. We have an important option, align to grid. So I click here and basically we already know how this uh, panorama was taken. Remember, it was uh, seven rows and four columns. So here we can select uh, how many columns uh, and rows, those 28 images have to be divided, arranged. So already, I made that already the setup, so it's uh, seven rows and four columns, so this is fine. Then from here, I can select how these images were taken, in which order. So in this case, uh, uh, the order I applied was from the top left, down then the camera was going up again taking the images down and so on until uh, uh, the right part so the idea the order was uh, by column the direction was uh, unidirectional top bottom and uh, uh, the start was top left okay if i change it for example I put the top right you see here the design change also it's uh, kind of intuitive top left Okay, here we have uh, for the horizontal axis and the vertical axis, uh, we can select uh, how much overlapping there is over the y axis and x. Uh, we can add here just a uh, um, rough value, so it's like 35%. Uh, we don't need to be super precise because, uh, mm, as we see, uh, it's the software that then will decide exactly how much overlapping there will be. So this is just for a preliminary adjusting of this uh, uh, panorama. Okay, then we can leave uh, all the other parameters as they are and we can do apply, click over here. And uh, from here, now it's available this option panorama editor. So we can click here and uh, we have a preliminary view of the final product, this, uh, this panorama. Of course, in this case, you see it's, uh, it's clear the image don't, are not uh, uh, overlapped perfectly. No? Uh, this view, it's just to be sure that, uh, for example, we have all the images. So there are not holes, for example, area with the missing picture or maybe we uh, made wrong the number of rows and the number of columns. Okay, so it would be all changed, the image would be looking very strange. So the image now is looking pretty nice. The only thing is that there is not, um, it's not perfectly matched every image, but this is uh, pretty normal. Okay, so this is fine. We can close this image and we can close also this one 
and we can go on uh, uh, step number two uh, which is align images okay so let's click this one the software is looking at the image and you see now uh, it's doing a much better work this is uh, the panorama editor again but the, uh, the image is much better there are some strange things for example over here you see there are this one so it means that there is something not perfectly matching also this one here uh, so it means uh, uh, that there are some images that the software could not automatically uh, totally recognize the position of each one so it means that in this case we need to do a little bit of a manual um, adjusting uh, to get a, a good final product uh, from this, uh, from the panorama editor, uh, a thing that we can do before we close it is to arran arrange uh, the angle of this uh, pigment check. So basically, what we see here is how the image was taken from the camera. So there was a little bit of tilting. We can correct it using the uh, right button of the mouse. So you see, I can do rotation. So I can uh, try to make a better angle, there it is. And then uh, I can also use the left button of the mouse to do a little bit of a tilting like this. So in this case, uh, let's make it bigger so we can see this effect. Okay, so there it is. So I use the left button. You see it's like uh, uh, we are projecting this pigment checker on this uh, sphere. It's like a sphere. Okay, so the idea is that we want to have a rectangular projection. So we want to have the sides of the pigment check uh, kind of parallel uh, vertical. So for example, this one seems to be nice, this position. Okay, so we can keep this as it is. Uh, this area here with the gray squares uh, will be part of the final project. So we don't want to we don't need this area so we work with these uh, bars over here to reduce this area okay there it is okay the other way okay we wanna reduce this area okay, there it is a little bit more this one okay this is the best we can now because we projected a little bit tilted the the pigment check okay it's uh, pretty good uh, we can close now this uh, panorama editor which uh, remember give us just an idea of the final product okay and uh, before we continue um, we can go here in a project uh, actually sorry uh, tools and we have control point assistant so this is very important control point assistant give us an idea uh, of uh, how many images uh, how the stitching the quality about the quality of the stitching so if all the images are recognized with enough point automatically okay so let's read uh, what a control point assistant is uh, suggesting us it says that uh, image 12 does not have any control point yet. So we need to manually add this point. So what we do is we go here, we click on 12, and uh, this is the control point view. <clears throat> From here, uh, we can select uh, on the left uh, uh, number 12, the image number 12, on the right we can select any of the other 28 images so in this case for example uh, the software is saying that uh, number 12 has not any match with any image so it's very bad because uh, the software could put this image wherever in the final panorama so we need to link this image with any of the close uh, images so in this case will be for example number 13 so the image below uh, will be linked with this one so for example here you see on the bottom uh, we read vermilion and carmine lake 
and we have vermilion and carmine lake here let's add uh, control points so for example uh, let's say we have this uh, angle we have a vermilion here okay so uh, for example we want to take the upper corner of the letter v of vermilion so i click here and i'm placing a point then what i do is i go here on the other image number 13 i go on the same spot and i click here so you see the software now is adding one control point pretty good so the idea is uh, to have a good stitching we should have at least four control points for each image so uh, by eyes pretty easy and fast so for example we have this uh, carmine lake so for example this uh, area here the border white border so i click here carmine lake then i move the mouse to the other image um carmine lake the upper part here we are and we added another point then i could add for example this other swatch of color over here uh, and the software automatically moved already here because it noticed that uh, uh, basically the software already with two points was able to figure out where was the other matching so the matching is pretty nice we can leave uh, over there if it's not perfect could be we can just go over there with the mouse and we drag this point a little bit where we think it's uh, it's better so we need to add now just another point so we can use the letter e of the lake so for example the center of the letter e over here i click here and then i move over here and the software seems uh, to do already yeah to do a good job in finding uh the right position over there okay so we have a four point at this point we go back to the project assistant uh, we can shortly do this uh, by keyboard clicking ctrl shift a and there it is uh, the software says uh, uh, so we have this uh, uh, paragraph too few con control points image 22 has uh, fewer than for control points so um, the only issue so far is that this image uh, it's just uh, image 22 as a little point so we go there and we add this point okay so this is uh, number 22 here uh, we can link uh, 22 with the one below which would be 23 okay so we go here 23 okay so you see in this case the software was able to find already one point in common uh, but we say we list at least uh, we need four points control points okay for us uh, it's very simple so i can click um, for example here zinc white so we have zinc white uh, the center of this uh, cross line over here and then I move to the other image and I click the same spot. So we placed uh, we placed um, control points number two. Then let's see what else we have. We have the other swatch of color. So the white over here. I go I click here and also I click here on the top. Uh, then uh, well we can go here in this corner. Uh, of course uh, these uh, mm, points must be as uh, separate as possible that's the idea you know, in order for the software to have a better way to arrange the image so we have this corner over here and uh, the software found the position itself pretty good okay we go back to uh, project control so control shift a um, and the software say some control points have a large optimization error which means that the optimizer was unable to perfectly align the control points um, to improve the results go to the control points table and check the placement of these control points okay so what happens uh, let's close this one uh, we go uh, sorry in tools uh, and we do control points table 
there it is so basically this one is um, another important place to look at uh, all the control points that we have been adding are listed over here so there is for example the first one we have the number of the first image number 12 the image that is linked uh, number 13 then the number of the actual uh, uh, control point it's number three uh, okay type is normal basically we're using just a normal kind the distance is uh, 59 so in a normal good uh, um, stitching process this uh, distance in pixel should be maximum two three three maximum so 59 means that there is a very big mis misplacing misplacement of these uh, um, pixels of this image so definitely what i suggest is uh, to delete these uh, control points that have this kind of too big even three say want to be precise so we do select them and we click delete then i close this one and i do the alignment again so this is done by going into tools and uh, we run uh, uh, sorry we go in a project and uh, we click on optimize okay so now the software is taking into account all these uh, modifications that we have been doing so uh, the, the, the modification where we added the control points we deleted very bad control point and so now the software says uh, okay look uh, we are doing a very good job uh, the average control point distance is at 0 0.4 so very small the maximum is 1.7 it's okay it's so still a small so uh, we can click ok to accept this modification and uh, we could uh, <coughs> we go in project uh, at this point we can go into preview I click preview over here to have a look at uh, the panorama how it should look like uh, okay let's see so uh, the current project is not cancel okay so this is the preview okay so we go back into tools project preview uh, we could go into create uh, panorama uh, before just have let's have again an optimize okay so do we want to accept the made change yes okay so project uh, create panorama okay so create panorama here is where we says we say to the software we tell the software where to save the images the final image uh, this is the dimension of the final image uh, which result from stitching in this small image so the size you see is still not that big uh, will go in the same director uh, so basically we can leave everything as it is maximum quality uh, we can click create panorama uh, okay now let's save it because we already had something over there browse so we want to save it on the desktop for example okay save so I click here, create a panorama, and uh, the software is creating the panorama. Okay, so there it is. This is the final project. Um, and here we have uh, the project. We see up here is a predefined. So it was stitched as uh, supposed to be. Uh, here we have a problem. Okay, so we need to check this one. It was an image that was uh, without any control point. So we go back here in the software. Uh, we go in the tools, uh, main window, project, align image. So we do the alignment again. So let's do uh, uh, once in a while let's save the project so because uh, when we add a control point basically uh, we are losing time you know it's a time consuming process so it's good to make a copy out of it so let's call it uh, for example panorama 
uh, big main shaker PC save um, okay so at this point uh, project assist we go back here to the project assistant uh, from here uh, let's do another align images okay so we see the problem no, actually it's uh, not bad it's not bad actually because it's over here okay so it's uh, it seems not bad um, okay so let's go to the tools panorama control point assistant okay there it is uh, image 12 has fewer than four control points so let's go on uh, image 12 so this was the problem I was uh, seeing you see number 12 um, uh, number 12 has a few control points so number 12 is over here should be connected with the number 13 for example it's below you see here we have a vermilion and here we have a vermilion so the software didn't have the control point here so that's why I noticed it was looking a little bit bad so let's do this uh, control point manually so 12 on 13 uh, we use this uh, vermilion over here the border for example pretty nice so this is a point over here then I move to the other one um, okay okay there it is this point over here the million we add this point then we can use the center of the cross line over here and we go here and we center in this point then we can use uh, remember the point have to be a little bit apart so we go in the Carmen Lake and we click here and then we click here and then uh, a fourth point let's say okay we can use this uh, point up here this one and this one over here okay pretty good pretty good so again we go in project we do optimize uh, the software says it's pretty good uh, though I want to see in the tools I go into control point assistant uh, show suggestion okay and here we have uh, a little bit now of suggestion things that uh, don't work well so we need to fix it the following pairs of image overlap but don't have a control point so uh, we go over each one and we add uh, manually the point 11 and 12 so we have 11 and we have 12 uh, so we have a lead tin yellow over here lead tin yellow over here okay let's add the point so this corner and then this corner uh, the center the cross line over here this cross line over here uh, then we can use saffron the saffron swatch over here and the saffron swatch over here okay then maybe the fourth point could be this cross line over here and you see there the software recognized the position already so we can go back to the control point assistant um, okay uh, missing control point 12 and 19 so here we have 12 and here we have 19 so 12 and 19 uh, they are uh, on the same row but different columns okay so you see saffron is here and then we have saffron over here okay so we need to match this area and this area okay let's start with or piment that is on the top so we can use the start of the cross line here and the start over here then we can do the same with the saffron and the saffron then the chrome yellow we see the line over here and uh, yeah there it is a little bit lower maybe okay and then uh, for example Carmen Lake we still see it okay Carmen Lake over here and Carmen Lake over here pretty nice uh, control shift a uh, other point to be corrected so we have a two and three two and three over here 
this in this case two and three means three is under this one so we see indigo over here and indigo now is upper uh, over there okay so let's do quickly so I mean, uh, once you know how to operate it's a pretty fast process so we cl click this one so we click this one indigo uh, then uh, for example Maya Blue I can take the letter A as a reference like maybe like the bottom part of the letter A and do the same thing over here um, okay there it is uh, then we could use uh, this corner over there and the same code the software recognized the point so it was uh, super fast and then indigo i can use this uh, corner on the top and the corner over there okay this is done Control shift a let's see other suggestion at the point with uh, misleading area we have a three and four three and four okay same thing we have a phthalo blue here phthalo blue there so let's do uh, the corner Phthalo blue, and then we do phthalo blue over here, then the other corner of phthalo blue. Okay, so we do this corner and we go up on this corner. Okay, one, two, then we can use uh, well, the corner of green earth. There it is. The software recognized the point. Okay, so it was fast. And then uh, malachite, also the corner of malachite and malachite. Software, you see, it's uh, not perfectly matching. So makes sense uh, to go there with the, the mouse and drag this one over here a little better. Okay, there it is. Um, okay, Control Shift A. Let's see other point. 5 and 11 5 and 11 so 5 and 11 the number are distant because they are on a different column so we need uh, to arrange um, so 5 and 11 let's see just uh, let it in uh, Okay, no, this one actually, uh, yeah, they are distant. They are also not on, they are on different column and uh, on different row. So the software saw there is overlapping and we have, you know, so for example, you see on the bottom, here we have lead tin yellow and lead tin yellow is over here. So we have curcuma here and we have curcuma here. Okay, so let's do uh, a little bit of stitch over here. We can use the border of the curcuma, the frame. So this point over here. This point over here to be more precise. Okay, then um, we can do, oh, let's see, so curcuma letting yellow well this one has not that much because it's just the corner that is overlapping uh, the letting the yellow let's work on the tin letter n of the tin so we have this one and we also click over here okay so we have these two nice point uh, the L of lead so we can take the upper part of the L and then goes over here. Okay, so we have a three point and then we can take this uh, corner of the other pigment. Okay, this one, this swatch, and then this watch the software recognize the point. Okay, let's see what the software asks uh, for and uh, 12. Uh, 4 and 12 we have a curcuma over here okay so let's do uh, the bottom of curcuma okay this point and also here the bottom of curcuma so this will be number one 
um, what else? Uh, letter M. So we go up over here, the bottom of the letter M, and then over here, the bottom of the letter M. So we have two points, and uh, then we can work on uh, this other swatch. So we have here yellow ochre. We have this watch, the upper part of the corner. It's over here, and the software recognizes the position. So we go here, okay. And then number three could be the bottom of this uh, core. Actually, yeah, this other one, lead tin. Uh, this other lead tin. So we can go over here, click here, and the software found the position over there. Okay, this is done too. Uh, let's see, we have a 26 and 27. This would match much better because there are one on top of the other. So you see cadmium red, cadmium red over here. So this would be much faster. Okay, so we have cadmium red and then cadmium red, one and one. Uh, we can use the letter uh, R actually use this other swatch, the center of this one, and the center of this one. Uh, then we can use the this corner here, and this uh, corner over here, and then this corner okay, this uh, corner over here with that corner and therefore. Okay. Let's move, we have the last two basically, we are done, uh, okay, with this main issue, then 19 and 20, 19 and 20, so we have 19 and 20, what we have here, so there are one on top of the other, so this is also very simple, so here we have for example Carmen Lake, and here we have Carmen Lake, so we can take the center of this Carmen Lake, the center of this Carmel Lake, we have one point, then we can do also a lizarine over here, a lizarine uh, over here, and then uh, we can have the top corners over here, so for example this one, this one was recognized already, and uh, we can take also this one, number four, okay, control A, and uh, missing control point 19 and 27, so 19 here, 27 over here. Uh, what is the um, matching? So cadmium red is here, cadmium red is here. So we have just this uh, slight part that overlap. Okay, so let's take the letter R, the bottom of the letter R, also here the bottom of the letter R. Uh, then we can take lake, so we go here where there is lake, the L, and then we go here, we have the L, another point, then we can go to this other, this swatch over here, and then we have the swatch over here, and then we can do also this uh, swatch on the bottom, this one, and this one over here. Okay, four point. Uh, okay, so then uh, we have uh, the last things we can do to have a better one is uh, this list uh, of uh, other what are ten, 10 points where there are few control points. So generally it's uh, just like three, which would be already good enough, but uh, let's uh, look at them. 10 and 11, okay, you see in this case it's just one point, so it's good to add another one. So cobalt chromite, for example, mm, okay, so we can take this uh, corner over here, cobalt chromite, and then we go on the corner over here. So two and two, we can take the upper part cobalt chromite, uh, so the upper part of this corner, this one, and then we go here and this will be the point. We can work with this uh, swatch, this one, and uh, this one over here. Uh, okay, so we have a one, two, three, uh, and then we have uh, verdigris. Okay, so for example, this one for the verdigris, this point, and this point. Okay, so we have actually more points requested. 
Okay, so let's move to something else. Uh, 25 and 26, also here we have just one point and uh, let's add something else. So we have uh, for the Nepal yellow, so we can take this point, Nepal yellow, and also we can take this point. Uh, then we can go uh, using N. So for example, the N over here, and then also the N over here, the layer, and then we can use the grain, uh, this other. Okay, number four. Okay, and then uh, we can go also over the other. Let's say here we have two points. Let's add uh, another one. Uh, so we have one black, for example, we can do the B. Okay, messaging. Uh, okay, two and three. Okay, then uh, we can add another point, for example, vine black over here. Okay, uh, then uh, what else we can do? Hold the shift A, uh, six and seven, six and seven. So uh, we have a sepia, for example. Let's work on this sepia, the A. The A was added, and maybe work on this uh, uh, row sienna, uh, the row. So the letter W. Okay, this point and then row over here. Okay, so shift A, 24, 25, 24 and 25. So one over the other. Oh, we can add another point over here and there it is. Then we can work this center point. This one is a little bit higher. Okay, there it is. Uh, control A. And then we have 14, 21. So here we have just one point. Uh, it's better to add much more. So we have this uh, Van Dyke, Sepia, Bitumen. So we can use the N of Bitumen. Bitumen, and we use the N. Okay. Then we have this. Um, uh, Siena, so we can use the A, the corner of the A, and there it is, and maybe we can use also this corner over here. Okay, uh, then we proceed with the other. Uh, it's good to practice to save this uh, project once in a while, since we are doing save project as uh, save, so it's saved on the desktop, want to replace it, yes, because we don't want to lose uh, this information. And we can continue, so we have uh, control shift A again. Okay, so we go back to the control point assistant and we have also these other points. Um, four and five are missing control point because we deleted. it. So four and five, uh, we go about it. Uh, so four and five, let's see, so yellow is up there. Okay, so we take the bottom of a yellow curve, this point, this point, yellow ochre, okay, yellow ochre, number two, then we can take a little thin yellow, this upper point and there it is and then the letter T for example it's far away T and letter T over there okay this is done uh, then we have to few control point 11 and 12 so this is 11 this is a 12 um, we are we have already three so it's pretty fine actually let's add another point of saffron over there it's pretty fine um, then we have a 22, 23. Also here we have already three. So three is a fine already. Okay, and so it's uh, the software is asking for more point just to be really more precise. But already it is something pretty nice. Okay, there it is. Uh, we 
we go into project, we do into optimize. So you see now is a 2.9, so we are pretty satisfied with this optimization project, create panorama at this point. Uh, okay, we want to override the ones we did before, okay. And, uh, and there it is, it has been done, so it should be on the desktop and it's this one. Let's open this image and now we see here there is no anymore that kind of uh, misalignment we saw before. So the image uh, it's much better. So now we did uh, a good job in uh, uh, working all the, um, the stitching. So uh, depending basically on the area, on, on the object we are doing uh, the painting, we could have an uh, uh, issue that we have to solve uh, uh, manually. So in this case, uh, doing the pigment check, uh, the software wasn't much able to distinguish a different area, probably because uh, it's this kind of a geometric repetitive pattern. So we need to work it out uh, uh, manually with our natural intelligence. Uh, we just find the point. It's a little bit time consuming, but then we have total control on the result. So there it is, and then we can just cut, resize, uh, crop the area here, for example, we don't deserve, and uh, this is it.